due to our success in the cinema market, yeah, then our main competitor Dolby came very fast with an with a solution as well. And even for them, it's not easy. And I think that was bringing them in difficulties because they developed Atmos, in fact, in the beginning only for the cinema industry because mm -hmm. they could never imagine that people were going to install like. Uh, 15 speakers or like 10 or more speak more than 10 speakers at home yeah so and that's the reason the moment when they designed that afterwards they had to come with solutions to bring it to a consumer format and that is creating this kind of uh, you, you do you know how that works for them no Ah. Please exp can you explain? <laughs> He's like, let it's me like, tell ah, you there's my there's, book I was telling here's you about. another hour this is the flow no, please <laughs> No, I'm not going to highlight so much about our competitors. Uh, <laughs> That's about to say. Hey, real How quick, real quick, real yeah. quick. Uh, let Here, me say, here's, I had, here's I... one of my patrons. This is what he just said. We just watched Spider Man Homecoming in Oro 3D, and it's the best sound we've ever heard. Oh, great. Okay, thank Boom. you. So Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah. Yeah. Always. By the way, those videos that we that we played, I think I I linked to those because I uploaded it privately to my channel or you can unlisted. Have, so you can, I linked okay. to those. Yeah, but you can have them. So it's it's public information. There's nothing secretly. Okay. Being said just those videos yeah. that you just showed. Yes, you can have them. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. But you can show them on the YouTube channel you have. So no problem. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Here, let's say. Do you see here this left figure? Do you see my mouse now or not? Oh, hold on. We, we need to hold on. You have, in order to show your mouse, you have. Oh, there we go. Yes. There we go. Yeah, we can see. You see this? Mm -hmm. You see on the left side. Is this DNA? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Dolby DNA, yeah. <laughs> no. So what you have oh. here, this this blue this this blue things here, mm -hmm. are objects, yeah. Now, in our 3D, the advantage we have is those objects they have as well three-dimensional reflections, yeah, and we can record and reproduce these 3D reflections in the channel-based environment. So there's always like a time relation between them and whatever, let's say, the speaker layouts created in our 3D are in such a way that this time relation is always respected. So that's the way that our artistic intent is much higher because the way it is being recorded and the way it is being produced is much closer to each other, yeah, compared to with object-based technology where the renderer is deciding where to place an, a kind of an object into a speaker. And as you know, uh, in the cinema theater, yeah, Dolby Atmos has in total 118 objects yeah, that they can decide simultaneously to bring somewhere in the 20, 30, 50, 60 channel speaker layout of a cinema theater. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> then that, that uh, let's say, requires a lot of bandwidth. You know, each object is just like a PCM monotrack, yeah? and with some metadata, and the renderer is going to use that metadata to see where it is being positioned. Mm -hmm. yeah? So you can imagine 118 times, that's 118 PCM channels. That's a lot of bandwidth. You see, normally we are talking here about 7.1. So we jump from 7.1 suddenly to 128 PCM channels. The bandwidth is huge, yeah? But in a professional cinema system, you have that bandwidth. It's there, yeah? Right. Uh, <clears throat> but the point is when you go to home, you have again that problem that in home you have maximum the bandwidth of eight channels PCM. Yeah. So how was Dolby then able to bring all this kind of stuff? So what they did is they decided to come with a cluster system. That means that they're going to, uh, to let's say, to um, take an average where a few objects are coming together and take that as the metadata. And that's what you see on the right side, yeah? Mm -hmm. You see, they are like the they are like clusters, yeah? And in total, they have, in fact, in theory, I believe they can make 16 clusters and including, of course, the channels. Yeah? The a channel is one of the, of the corners as well, yeah? So, and then the objects are divided in those clusters. And those clusters, they move to the places, yeah, where the closest is, and it means that it means that if a cluster is moving, yeah, sometimes it moves from one cluster into another one, which can be a, a very hard jump, and that's the reason why the sound is not sometimes not 
traveling smooth anymore. It jumps from one to another one. And I heard already a, a few examples on that, yeah, where what you hear in the cinema theater, like a nice smooth movement, yeah, with lots of speakers around it, when it comes into a home system with, let's say, with, with, um, with uh, let's say, even with, with the amount of channel, uh, speakers is not, uh, it can be important. It, it differs as well how the speaker layouts are then it differs as well in this jumping thing. But even if there are like six speakers on the ceiling, you still feel this kind of average jumping. You don't hear it with every object, of course. But these are artifacts that our technology is not suffering from because we have this in this channel-based thing, whereas an engineer, uh, you decide which kind of panning law you use, and that will be exact the same panning law that you have in the reproduction, yeah, which is much less predictable in the let's say in our competitors form yeah didn't didn't you have a friend uh aaron hopefully he can be on sometime yeah but he I'm wasn't hoping. a big fan of uh what atmos or all of yeah them? All of them. I, well i think he just prefers general 5.1 so he's a he's a re-recording engineer with a few oscars mm -hmm. under his belt wow. um and he and i were talking about that and he was saying that his basic basically his I guess input on uh, on Atmos is that it's kind of a money grab. So I thought that was kind of interesting to hear that from him. And he just thinks that regular old 5.1 as opposed to Atmos is pro But I didn't ask him about Oro or Oro 3D or anything. I don't even know what he's done with that. No, but, but I, think, I, I think that's I, a good point you're bringing up. But the point is uh, one of the reasons I believe uh, Aaron has to do with the fact that in 5.1, um and fact, let me put it differently yeah you know that in most of the atmos tracks yeah in fact dolby even made this publicly on a convention uh between 85 and 95 percent of all the sounds are coming from the channels the bad not, layers not yeah, from the bad from the bats from the channels not from the not, not from the objects yeah and what you have as well that um uh, sometimes people complain as well that there's not so much used, yeah. Mm -hmm. In in the yeah, high that's like the number one thing that we hear, yeah. Yeah, that's and and that has different reasons, yeah.